Hello, I'm Michael Moshiri, and today I'm going to talk to you about TRAP's Advanced Endpoint Protection and how it helps our customers to prevent cybersecurity breaches on their endpoint. When you look at an, an attack, typically it involves a first phase where the attacker is conducting reconnaissance in your environment, followed by a phase where they're compromising an endpoint in order to be able to gain a foothold or a beachhead in your environment from which they can launch the rest of their attacks. Then they typically uh, establish a control channel which then allows them to get some more instructions for how to pursue the remainders of their objectives. So this is the initial phase. Now let's double click on this and see what that looks like. So when you look at what it takes to compromise an endpoint, it typically involves two phases. The first phase of this is where the attacker is delivering whatever that attacking agent is to the endpoint, and the next is to conduct a series of malicious actions in order to compromise the endpoint. So these are the two phases that the attacker has to essentially accomplish. And they have a lot of options for how they do this. They can launch a web-based exploitation in order to be able to get past your, uh, get past your uh, security uh, controls. They can trick the user to download some kind of malware. And of course, last but not least, is to send email attachments and to trick users to open them. Now, of course, the attackers are not limited to these options in singularity. They can, of course, combine these. And we've seen a lot of attacks where uh, the user gets an email that, in that includes a link. They're tricked into going to the link. And of course, they end up getting compromised uh, with one of these malicious actions. So let's look at those malicious actions. Now, attackers have plenty of options here as well. They can exploit good applications. They can run malware. And this is what we've seen a lot in the past. And now they can run, these are some of the newer attack vectors. They can run scripts and Office macros. These would be macros that are embedded in Office, uh, Microsoft Word, and Excel documents. And they can try to exploit the operating system itself or in, um, escalate their privileges so they can gain access to system level resources. So this overall is how the attackers try to compromise an endpoint. Now let's take a look and see why the attacks have increased and we've not been able to stop them as an industry by looking at what, they, what sort of protection we've had uh, in the industry so far. So if you look at the traditional and signature-based antivirus, the picture looks somewhat like this. Actually, this is probably a little lower. This is what it looks like for traditional and signature-based antivirus in terms of the types of protection that they provide. So as you can see, this picture is uh, showing a lot of areas that are uh, still open and unprotected. Next, let's take a look at what next-gen reactions to the, to the shortcomings of traditional antivirus uh, have done and have accomplished. Some of these have tried to improve on uh, the engines that the, ex that the uh, antivirus has been using in the past by replacing it with machine learning or some other method. But in fact, they haven't really improved the game that much to be able to provide more protection for customers. They've pushed the game forward a little bit, uh, but maybe not by that much. Now, of course, there has been other reactions to the failures of traditional antivirus, where uh, some, some uh, security vendors have decided that let's try to analyze every bit of data that we can get from the endpoint and decide whether that particular endpoint is likely to be uh, in the process of becoming compromised. And that approach is called EDR, right? or point, endpoint detection and response. And when you look at where they focus, they, re they assume that you already are compromised and the battle is somewhat lost, so the best they can do is provide you with telemetry and information about uh, things that are already happening in your endpoint. They're not really actually preventing the exploitation or the, the malware from running on the, end, on the endpoint. What we have been able to accomplish with TRAPS is quite, quite a bit different. TRAPS prevents both exploits and malware, known or unknown, from compromising an endpoint using an approach that we call multi-method prevention approach. And with TRAPS, we've been able to accomplish a picture that looks like this. 
we have been able to provide all of our customers with significant malware and exploit prevention capabilities, as well as significant capabilities on preventing scripts and macros from compromising an endpoint, and provide significant protection against the exploitation of the operating system and privilege escalations. So now let's take a quick look at how we provide multi-method malware prevention to our customers to accomplish this type of uh, protection. All right, so looking at our multi-method prevention capabilities, we have a series of capabilities that help our customers to prevent malware from compromising an endpoint, as well as a series of capabilities to, uh, ex uh, to prevent exploitation of the operating system, exploitation of good applications, and other capabilities. So let's quickly recap what these are. On the malware prevention capability side, we use Wildfire to prevent known malware from compromising an endpoint. And here, we use the threat intelligence that's stored in Wildfire to identify anything that has been seen before, any malware that has been seen before. And Wildfire is a cloud-based malware analysis and threat intelligence repository for us. And all of our customers and all of their uh, uh, Palo Alto Networks uh, technologies are submitting threat intelligence to Wildfire for analysis. And that, uh, in, in combination with what we're getting from our threat intelligence partners, as well as our own Unit 42 human curated uh, threat intelligence, helps us to identify pretty much most of what uh, you would probably encounter in your environment. So this allows us to prevent known malware or previously seen malware from compromising your environment. We also have, for unknown malware or potentially unknown malware, a local analysis capability. The local analysis capability allows us to examine a file structure right on the, system, on the machine itself and determine whether it's likely to be malicious or benign. This uses machine learning. And the way we have accomplished this is that we've trained our machine learning algorithm using all of the threat intelligence that's stored in Wildfire so that it can immediately, by examining a file structure, determine whether it's likely to be malicious or benign. In addition to the local analysis that appears uh, that happens on the machine itself, we also use Wildfire's full analysis for files that we don't recognize or we don't we know that they are unknown to Wildfire as well. Those files trap submits up to Wildfire for full analysis that includes both both static analysis, again looking at the structure of the file, as well as dynamic analysis, which means the file is detonated in a customized sandbox that we have developed. Uh, and in addition to that, we can also run the malware or potential piece of malware on uh, bare metal, so actual hardware, to determine if it's, uh, if it's malware. And that detects even the most evasive types of malware. We also have another capability, which is called malicious process control. Malicious process control allows us to identify whether a particular um, application that is typically uh, a risky application is, is uh, being launched by another application. So in, in a sense, it gives us fine-grained control of what applications can actually launch which processes as child processes. And in fact, when you look at a lot of the ransomware attacks that we see today, uh, you have applications such as Microsoft Word that are launching a PowerShell utility and then executing a script to conduct, conduct some kind of malicious activity. Or Internet Explorer is launching a script interpretation, an interpretation engine so they can uh, uh, do some malicious activity. So we got to give our customers uh, fine-tuned control over which processes can actually launch additional processes. Last but not least, we have used this entire capability to help us to prevent malicious macros. So in fact, what we're doing is we're applying the same methodology when we see a macro that, uh, that's trying to execute or open within a Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word document. We check with Wildfire to see if it's been seen anywhere. If it hasn't, if it has and we have a verdict, we act accordingly. Otherwise, we submit it to uh, local analysis on the machine as well as optionally send it up to Wildfire for full analysis so we can determine whether it's likely malicious or benign. The process control, which is a capability that's always on, also prevents the macro from launching sub-processes such as PowerShell and, and uh, other administrative tools or uh, script interpretation tools. So that's a word about malware, uh, malware prevention. Let's take a quick look at exploit prevention. On the exploit prevention side, we have the ability to actually prevent the exploitation before it actually starts. A lot of the exploit kits that we see in the market and uh, have been active recently uh, use a profiling process to identify the vulnerabilities in an environment before they launch an attack so they can identify 
What's the best attack to compromise this, in, this particular environment? They use a logical um, uh, vulnerability, Internet Explorer and Edge, to be able to do that. And we block those vulnerabilities. We also have the ability to block the techniques that attackers use in all of their uh, exploitations. So our technique-based exploit prevention technology allows us to prevent the underlying techniques that all exploits use, whether they're known or unknown to us humans. So traps can stop both known and unknown or zero-day exploits uh, just as well. Last but not least, we have the ability to prevent post-exploitation, meaning when an, uh, an endpoint has been compromised and the attacker is, uh, is trying to escalate their privileges, or maybe uh, this is a type of attack that's, that's uh, trying to compromise the operating system itself, we have the capability to identify both those types of attacks uh, and, and stop them before they can actually compromise an endpoint. So that's a quick look at our multi-method exploit prevention approach. Now, of course, if you're interested in a deep dive in any of one of these uh, particular techniques, we have additional Lightboard videos. Please look for those and uh, look through the examples. And um, I hope they would be um, uh, informative for you. Thank you very much.